Good morning. Back to work after our Easter break. We're going to start with voyages. And on this Wednesday, April 15th, we're going to be working with irregular adjectives that compare. Right before break, we worked on adjectives that compare by adding ER or EST to the end of them. And we did talk about sometimes you have to work on the spelling. If it's a short vowel sound with one consonant afterwards, you have to double the consonant before you can add ER or EST. Sometimes you have to change the Y to I and add EST or ER. Um, but as we're all aware from studying verbs, and especially, but also nouns that when they're plural, um, that are irregular, that don't follow any spelling rules whatsoever, they just do their own thing, and you have to have completely new spelling. So we're going to practice what to do when you're comparing and you want to use a word that just doesn't follow the ER or EST rule at all. But first of all, let's go back and do our daily maintenance. We're doing lesson 5.6, so we're going to go back to page 74, the last um, daily maintenance on that page. So you're going to be tearing out 73 and 74 and turning it in, hopefully Friday, at our drop-off, um, April 17th, if your family is able to get out and do that. I know I want you to be safe. Um, so our sentence today is, Lynn ate a cheese quesadilla. Fun sentence, fun word, good tasting food. So the first question is, is the subject simple or compound? Well, who is this sentence about? It's about Lynn. So Lynn is one word, one person, so it's just simple. So I'm going to write simple on my board. And you need to write simple on line number one. On page 74, lesson 5.6. Now, number two, what is the verb? And that, again, is a simple action verb. So it is eight, A-T-E. We're going to write that on line number two, eight. Number three, is the verb present or past tense? All right, so if I were doing it right now, I would say I am eating. And it is eight. If I was going to do it in the future, I would say, well, I'm going to eat a cheese quesadilla. So it must be past tense. I ate a cheese quesadilla. Or in this case, Lynn ate. So we're going to put past tense. And we are going to write both words on the line. We're not going to be lazy. Past tense. All right. Now you go ahead and you do your your diagramming and I'm going to do my diagramming and then we'll compare and see how you did. Guys, you're so good at this that usually I'm sure yours matches mine just exactly. Okay. All right, are you ready? There we go. So your subject was Lynn. Your um, verb, the main word in your predicate, ate. Quesadilla is your direct object, telling what you mm. specifically ate. And then you have two describing words, both adjectives. Your cheese and then a. Uh. And we are going to be talking more about a. Uh, and an and the this week as we talk about articles, which are very, very, very special adjectives. All right, so let me erase my board. And we want to flip to lesson 5.6 in our book. So we're going to go to page 82. Irregular adjectives that compare. That's a long title, isn't it? So what are we going to do first? We are going to grab our highlighters. We are going to use our pencils, but we're also going to use our highlighters for this lesson. So we're going to start off with circling 
the best one. So, like I said before, some adjectives that compare are irregular. They cannot be formed by adding ER if you're comparing two things or EST if you're comparing a whole group of things. They are formed by adding um, a whole new word. For example, the most common one would be, um, common ones would be good and bad. So if I want to say that, if I want to compare things and I want to use the word, word good, I can't say gooder or good est. I have to say better and best. So good, better, best. See how it doesn't follow any of the rules at all. And bad, I don't say badder. Some people do and you guys have corrected many people. That's not really a word. Badder and baddest, not really words. So you say bad, worse, worst. Bad, worse, worst. So again, you see how it doesn't follow the rule of adding ER or EST even by changing the spelling. So we're going to go through one through seven first. We're just going to do number one together because this is, you're looking for the one that is correct, the one that makes the most sense in the sentence. So it says, Vanessa is a blank dancer than Mimi. I'm comparing two people. Vanessa is a good dancer than Mimi. Na Vanessa is a better dancer than Mimi. Well, I'm comparing two people, so I'm not going to have good because that is my singular. Um, and I know it's good, better, best. So better makes sense. So a number one, everyone should highlight better. And then on your own, either stopping the video and doing it right now or waiting till the end of the video, you are going to read and highlight the correct irregular adjective that compares in sentences two through seven. All right, then let's go down to number eight. And we are going to work specifically on all of eight through 13 just with good, better, best. Good, better, best. And the reason that we're going to focus just on that is that a lot of people use good incorrectly and they use it, um, I, I just hear it when you should be using best um, all the time. So this page gives us a lot of extra practice with adjectives that compare, especially good. Um, it's the one we would use the most often, like I said at the beginning, and it is misused often. So in 8 through 13, we have to decide, should we put good, should we put better, should we put best? And um, we're going to do this whole section together. I'm going to real quick write it on my board. Put 13 over here, just so we can practice together going through when you use which one so we, we don't make mistakes in our own writing and that you can hear me say it the correct way. So number eight, Jen is the blank whistler in our family. So we are comparing Jen to a whole family. So we would not use good because that's for singular. We would not use better because that's when you're comparing two people. Um, you would use best. But I have heard people say things like, Jen is the better whistler in our family. While it doesn't sound wrong, it is incorrect. So the one we would use would be best because you are comparing a large group. So number eight should be best. Number nine, a blank outdoor activity is walking. So you look at this sentence and you think to yourself, well, they're not comparing anything. And that's exactly right. So if I'm not comparing anything, then I would use the main word, which is good. A good outdoor activity is walking. So number nine would be good. Number 10, the children had a blank time at the park. Okay, children are playing at the park. 
are we comparing anything? No, we're not comparing the part to anything else. So what would we use? Yep, that's right, we would use good in this case again. We would not say we had a better time at the park, even though I do hear that sometimes. People do that incorrectly. You should use good, the main word. Number 11, your suggestion is blank than mine. So I'm saying I have a suggestion and you have a suggestion. And yours is blank than mine. Would I say good, better, or best? It's two people, so I would go with my two-person comparison word, which is better. So number 11, you should write better. Hopefully you did that already. Number 12, Tanya is a blank tennis player than Colleen. So two people are playing tennis, and one is blank than the other, so we know two people is better. So number 12 is also better better player than Colleen. Um, and then number 13, the last one in this section says, Lionel is my blank friend. Well, that one should be easy. You guys say those kinds of things about your friends all the time. So this person is comparing Lionel to all of their friends. So we would use the word best, best. So you should have all of those written down. Number eight was best. Number nine is good. 10 is good, 11 is better, 12 is better, and 13 is best. Then on the last part, we're going to also do this part together. So the only part you're doing on your own is that first part. And we're going to do the other one that you find most often. And we haven't done any practice with it yet. And that is bad, worse, and worse. So again, we are going to read the sentences. We're going to decide whether we are comparing or not. We are going to decide if we're comparing two or more, and then we'll put the right word in. So eight, 14 through 19. So the first thing we have to remember is bad is used if you're not comparing at all. Worse is used if you're comparing two things. And worst, is used if you are comparing a whole bunch of things. All right, number 14, my fever is blank today than it was yesterday. I don't have a fever. I hope you don't have a fever either. I hope everyone is well. Um, but I'm comparing today and yesterday. So I am comparing and I'm comparing two things. So I'm gonna go with that middle word, which is worse, W-O-R-S-E, worse worse today than yesterday. That's number 14. Number 15 says, what is the book, blank book you have ever read? What is the blank book you have ever read? Um, usually we ask the opposite. Like we want to know what you like. This one's asking what you don't like. And it's asking of all the books you've ever read, which one did you not like the most? And so what word do we use when we're comparing all kinds of things? Um, a large number and it is a bad, we use worst. W-O-R-S-T, worst. So number 15 is worst. Number 16, that was our blank game this season. So again, it's all on the downside for these. Um, and we're comparing this game to every other game this season. So we would use worst again because we're com um, comparing a large group of things. Number 17, I got a blank grade on my report. I got a grade on my report. There is no comparison there, is there? I'm not comparing anything. So I'm gonna go with my main original word, which was bad. I got a bad grade on my report. Number 18, the child was scolded for his blank behavior. Is there comparison? Got in trouble, wasn't doing a very good job of behaving. I don't hear a comparison there. So we're gonna go with our main word again, which is bad. 
child was scolded for their bad behavior. And then the last one, his performance was blank than yours. Apparently, neither one of you did very well. But it is you and another person, a boy. And his performance, I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they were playing a musical instrument. Um, wasn't as good as yours. So we would use two people. That means worse. W-O-R-S-E. Worse. His performance was worse than yours. Which means he did not perform as well as you. All right, so that is number 14 is worst, 15 is worst, 16 is worst, 17 is bad, 18 is bad, and 9 is worse. So now, if you haven't already, you need to go back and highlight the first um, part and do those on your own. Then take a picture and put it on Seesaw so I can see that you did it. And then you'll turn it in on Friday, April 17th, if at all possible. All right. See you later.